Okay, so this is our last day of practice before we take the big test on uh, quadratics. It's not the biggest test, but this will definitely be one of the harder ones. And just because there's so many things to know, x-intercepts, y-intercepts, finding the vertex, making vertex form, factored form, general form. There's just so many different kinds. What I have here is factored form, okay? And if I were to uh, uh, get these answers right here, these are called the roots. But what are the other names? The zeros, what else? Solutions, what else? X-intercepts, okay. Zeros, x-intercepts, solutions, roots is another one. Okay, but what happens if this is just 2x in the front? What is going on? Well, remember, it's supposed to equal 0 because it's supposed to be like y equals, and we know y is equal to 0 because we're finding the y equals 0 when we're finding the x-intercepts, okay? So I'm making this, and yes, there's zeros. They're also called x-intercepts. Now, a lot of kids go, okay, well, I know one of them. One of them is negative 5, but what's the other one? Well, just give this one its own parentheses, and then it's not that bad. You get that has to have an answer, and that has to have an answer. Solve them both. Tell me what the two answers are. Write them down on your iPad right now. And would you compare them with the person that is across from you? Rows 1 and 2 compare, rows 3 and 4 compare, rows 5 and 6 compare with the person across from you. Hmm, you have different answers, huh? All right, did you have, hey girls, 2x equals 0, and did you have x plus 5 equals 0? Those are your two equations. And then if you solve them, this one freaks people out because you've got to divide 0 by something. Can you do that? Sure you can. It's legal. 0 divided by 2. If I have nothing and I have two people and I divide it up, how much do they each get? Nothing. So x equals 0. And this one's minus 5, minus 5, and I have x equals negative 5. There's my two answers, negative 5 and 0. Sometimes people forget 0 is a place. It is a number and it's a place. If you look on a graph, to get my two x-intercepts then are 0 and negative 5, so like here and here. Now, is this one going to be a mountain shape or a valley shape, like a U shape? It's a valley because what would give me a tip that it would have been a mountain if there was a negative in front? Okay, so then what's the other thing that's important to know about this one? Yeah, stretch factor would be important. I, I, I don't see any stretch factor. Okay, or, or should you consider that 2 to be a stretch factor? All right, I'm going to erase these parentheses that I put in because I think it's freaking some of you guys out. Whoa, that was not supposed to happen. Hold on. There, and that's what I was trying to hit. Okay, is that 2 a stretch factor or not? Okay, and what are the other important spots that I could get besides... This spot, we already have the roots. This spot and this spot. What's the other important spot? There's really only one more. Yes? The, yes, the y-intercept is important. How about we just get that quick? The y-intercept is where what? x equals 0. If I put in a 0 right here and a 0 right here, I'll have 2 times 0, which makes 0 times 5. But what's, what's 0 times 5? zero. So do you get that the x-intercept and the y-intercept are both zero? That's what it means if you go through the origin like that. The x-intercept zero, so is the y-intercept. Okay, then one more important spot, the vertex. Do you remember the dotted line thing where this, this, the, the vertex has to be on that dotted line? Okay, so how far apart are these? One's zero, this one's zero, and this one's at five. They're five apart, so they should go how far each? Two and a half. Two and a half. Half of the zero to, to here is negative two and a half, and then if I go this way, again, it's negative two and a half. So uh, this spot must be right here at x equals negative 2.5. That's my uh, line of symmetry. Then, this was a complicated one. If this is two, negative 2.5, I now stick that into my equation right here and there. So now I have 2 times 2.5, and then 2 point, or sorry, negative 2.5. So 
2 times negative 2.5 times negative 2.5 plus 5. That part makes positive 2.5. This part makes 2 times 2.5 is negative 5. So it's negative 5 times negative, nope, times positive 2.5. Negative 5 times this part right here is positive 2.5. And so that means 5 times 2 is 10, 10.25, negative 10.25. Does it make sense that my vertex would be negative on the x and negative on the y? So wouldn't it be negative 12.5? I think you're right. I better take a calculator quick. Somebody... Uh, Get me, actually, I can do this. 2.5 times 5, and then I'll just make it negative at the end. 5 times 5, 25. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more is 12. Thank you very much. Good catch, Mr. FD. Uh, it's negative 12.5. Sorry about that. So this point right here, it's a, it's a very tough one, but it's x is negative 2.5, and y is pos or negative 12.5. Whew. That's the process that you'd go through. All right, here's another tricky one. Factor this. This will be easy. Factor that one. If that one isn't easy for you, we're in some trouble. Did you have x plus 4 and x minus 4? So then what are the roots? 4 and negative 4. So those are the x-intercepts too, right? How about the zeros? 4 and negative 4. Okay. And if I wanted to write them as points, would they be 4 comma 0 or 0 comma 4? Because they're x-intercepts, so they were y equals 0, right? Okay. Okay, cool. So there, I found the x-intercepts for this. That wasn't too bad. All right, what if I had thrown a 2 in front of this? Actually, that would be really nasty. Then it wouldn't work real well. I'm going to make it a 4. There we go. Now I want you to try finding me the x-intercepts. If you want the x-intercepts, you just have to factor it. And I've also got that rule. If you can factor it, you should. All right. Did you factor a 4 out first? I hope you did. How many of you caught that? Okay, awesome. Then factor it again. Mr. N-O, what do you factor it to now? Yep. So what are the roots? Here's a big thing people do. They think you're supposed to write all of this down equals 0, including that 4. You're not. You're supposed to just have that equal 0 and that equals 0, and you ignore the 4. Do you get what I'm saying? x plus 2 is 4. x minus 2 is 0. Sorry, sorry. Is 0. Now I subtract 2x equals negative 2x equals positive 2. Okay. All right. I'm going to have you pick up from there. If that's the x-intercepts, what's the y-intercept? <laughs> Fill in the sentence. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. So you just stick a 0 in. Do you get all of this part here cancels? So what's y got to be? So it'll, it'll y intercepts negative 16. Yay. Okay, so how about the vertex on this weird looking one? Is it in vertex form? Actually, it is. Let me write it a little differently, and I'll show you that this is in vertex form y equals 4 times x plus 0 squared minus 16. Now, can you see what the vertex is? I can see it. To me, it's sticking out. The vertex of this parabola, the vertexes are found here and here. Remember how those two make the vertex? So the vertex of this guy is what comma what? 
Yep, that's its vertex. Its vertex happens to also be its what what? Its y intercept. Because its y intercept was negative 16 also. Its y intercept is where x is 0. I'll make a 0 right here, and this whole thing is going to cancel and turn into 0. And so the y intercept is negative 16. So its y intercept is its vertex. So it's way down here, and it must be like that, kind of. Okay, so those, that's another weird one. All right, I'm going to give you a couple more weird ones. They're on this piece of paper. Uh, and I want you to uh, I want you to do all three of these uh, for practice. Actually, I don't have enough of those, so I'm going to do this one instead. Actually, keep your iPad out. Because there's one of these that's really good, uh, and I want to uh, do it, but I, I don't have enough pieces of paper for everybody, so I'm just going to write it on the board. Try to answer this one. Negative 3 times x minus 4 squared plus 12. And here's the question. If the question was just what's the vertex, you'd be like, yawn, I know the answer. Boom, right? I hope. Okay, but that's not the question. The question is find the x intercepts, which are where y equals 0. And so I would recommend you first find general form, because remember how general form is good at telling you the y-intercept? It also is going to be good so that you can factor this thing. You might think it's factored. It's not factored. So to be able to factor it, you need to multiply it all out to get general form then you'll be able to find the x-intercepts. Because once you got this thing looking like this, it's easy to, get to, it's easy to get them. This part equals 0 and that part equals 0. But to get it that way, you got to get it in general form first. So find me the x-intercepts. Pause while you try that. I realized they had the recording paused, and I've been multiplying all this stuff out without the people at home, but I'm going to not reiterate all of that. I'm just saying, here's how you multiply it out, and we're down to the blue step at the end here, and we are doing our final factoring. Go ahead, Miss P. X minus 2, and X minus 6. Also awesome, and that means I've got my X intercepts. They're these guys, and don't try to mix that 3 in with them. It's just as simple as it looks. It's positive 2 and positive 6. Did anybody get there on their own? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 out of about 25, maybe. So let's say two-thirds of the class -ish. All right. Any questions? That was a tough one, but it wasn't like it was impossible. All you're really doing is multiplying things out and then factoring things back, back out. Once you got it all multiplied out, you had to factor it back again. Okay, so that was a tough one. But here is another sheet that I'm going to hand you. This one's on paper. Okay, so keep your iPad on your desk, just shut it, but you're going to need it back out in a minute, so don't put it all the way away. Soon. I'm going to write this problem on the board for those that are at home trying to follow along. Here is what I just challenged them with. If it's factored right now to this, it's already factored. If some of you are bothered that there's no x squared in it, it's just because it's been factored. If you want to see the x squared, you multiply it out. Generally, that's how you get general form. But if I were going to graph it, which is that big graph on the left implies you should be graphing it there, then I would use this form to tell me the x-intercepts. And don't forget, you could put a parenthesis around that. That's where the other root is. Then what I want is graph it, figure out general form, which you generally just multiply that out. Vertex form, better figure out the vertex somehow. You can use that dotted line technique. And then when it's all done, you have an equation. We already have an equation, actually. It's right there. 
and f of 1 just means that it's telling you to stick in a 1 and see what you get. All right, I'm going to pause for a moment and give that one a shot. All right, let's see how this one would come out. The beginning is multiply it all the way out. So negative 2x times this x, and that would make negative 2x squared. And the negative 2x times the negative 4 makes positive 8x. I know a lot of people are annoyed because there's no number at the end. But I could put plus 0 if that would make you feel better. Now I can see the y-intercept is 0. Okay, and that means it touches right here, right? And that's an, an, one of the two spots. This is one of the spots. Negative 2x equals 0 gives you x equals 0 is one of the roots. x minus 4 equals 0 gives you x equals 4 is the other root. How many of you knew it went through 0 and 4? Okay, good. Then, is this a mountain shape or is it a valley shape? Mountain shape. So I know it goes like this. Now it's a matter of finding that vertex. That dotted line down the middle, I think, is a good technique for this. It's between 0 and 4, and therefore it must be what? 2. x equals 2. That's the axis of symmetry. It's not the vertex, but it's the beginning of the vertex. The vertex is at 2 comma something. Mr. W, how do I put that 2 in to give me my answer? All right, I like to put it into this one. I could have put it in the other one also, but I'm going to put it in that very top one. Negative 2 times 2 makes negative 4. And then I multiply it times the other one, which becomes negative 2. And I've got negative 4 times negative 2 makes positive 8. Does 2 comma 8 sound right to you guys? How many of you had 2 comma 8? Sweet. This is a hard question, I know. This is like one of the harder ones you'd find on a test. All right, so 2 comma 8 is the vertex. It goes through 0 right here, and it goes through 4 right there. There we go. It's graphed. I know the vertex. I know general form. Pretty much the only thing left is to find F1. F of 1 is really simple. Oh, question? Oh, okay. So if it's vertex is 2 comma 8, vertex form, Y equals. Now, here's where a lot of people are going to make a mistake. They're going to forget the stretch factor. And they're just going to slap in x minus 2 squared plus 8 and think they did it right. But what's missing? A negative 2 on the front. Why do I know that? Because it had one right here at the beginning of this whole problem. There's a negative 2 out in front. There's a negative 2 right here also. That's how you could know there was a stretch and a flip. All right. And then the last thing is f of 1. This is telling me, hey, Put in x equals 1. That's what they're really just saying. So, go stick a 1 in the equation. I'm going to choose to put the 1 into this equation this time. I can use any of my equations. All right, so if I put in a 1, now I have this part right here becomes 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 8 makes 6. Raise your hand if you had 6 on that one, okay. And the very last one is f of 5. Well, 5 goes into my equation right there then. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 times negative 2 makes negative 18 plus 8. Negative 18 plus 8 makes, I think it's a negative 10. I think that's right. I'm seeing many people nodding their heads, so it must be right. Okay, good. All right, that covered like almost everything you could possibly need to know. Now, if you got that wrong, don't be all depressed because that was one of the hardest questions on the test. It's not a question off the test. It's just that's the kind of question that would be the hardest kind because it makes you do stuff that's not like, like you, you can't just do one step to find the answer. It makes you do a whole bunch of steps, it's like having to multiply this thing all the way out, then uh, having to find the vertex from that. That's tough, using that dotted line thing. One more thing, I heard that one of the other teachers is teaching uh, uh, about another way to find this dotted line. I like the whole thing where it, it, like you just run right down the middle between these two numbers. And if you like that, you can totally use that. But there is a little formula for finding this. If you want to know the formula, it's x equals negative b over 2a. It's the beginning and the end of the quadratic formula. You know, x equals negative b, blah, 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 blah all over 2a. I'm talking about that tells you 
what this is. So let me just show you how that would work. Negative b over 2a, I stick it in this equation right here, and I'd have, what's the negative b from this equation right here? Negative 8 over 2 times a would be 2 times, what's the a? Here's the a. 2 times negative 2, which would be 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4. And then if I divide negative 8 divided by negative 4, it is positive 2. If you would like that way, use it. Otherwise, if you like to use the dotted line thing, you can find it that way. Either way works. But negative b over 2a is something you would, if you take honors pre-calc next year, we will use that little formula a fair amount. Negative b over 2a. The dotted line thing works fine for what we're doing right now. Okay, so you've covered a lot of tough practice problems here, uh, and their very last thing is to do one last worksheet really well. Okay, you need to, you need to do the time, do put in the time tonight. If you do all the practice problems on that worksheet and you check them with the answer key, you'll be totally ready for this test tomorrow. Okay, but. I'm a little worried about some of you. My A students that have always been A students are probably going to be fine because they usually have been studying up to this point and they're going to be fine. But for those of you that have kind of gotten a lot of B's and sometimes a C, this will be one of the tougher tests for you. You better take the time tonight. Last thought. When am I available in the mornings? Mondays and Wednesday during mass and Thursdays. What's tomorrow? There you go. Okay, so you always have that option if you want. Remember, there'll be several kids in here. It won't be just you, but it's usually like four or five. So I can get, I can help you with several questions. What you should not do is say, well, I'm not doing my homework because I'm going to come in tomorrow morning. You won't have time to do it tomorrow morning and ask me questions. Do your homework tonight, and then if you still have questions, bring them in tomorrow. I'll be happy to help you. All right. That's all the review I have for you. For the test tomorrow, it's mostly factoring. If you could only pick one thing to study, there's a lot of factoring. And if you're good at factoring, yay, you can get lots of easy points that way. Okay, but there's lots more than just factoring, but factoring is the biggest thing. Okay.